has often protested that his plans for conquest do not extend across the Atlantic Ocean, but his submarines and radars prove otherwise. And so does the entire design of his new world order. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. themselves these are the only reasons I can imagine anything else anything else to do with religion with Islam it's a fraud it's a fake anything else anything else to do with religion with Islam it's a fraud it's a fake never look at Homeland Security I mean, security services for hundreds of years have been famous for staging their own bombings and shootings to take control. They're always the number one culprit taught in mainline criminology and history books. But, but oh, Alex Jones said, oh, Alex Jones says they're going to blame the right wing. What's they're doing? He's bad. <laughs> stage stuff and say we took the first shot. They'll, they'll find a federal building with a daycare again and blow it up. There's no doubt that was a federal operation. I'm in the film. <laughs> egomaniacs and narcissists out there that think they're patriots this isn't a game and they're gonna fire first by blowing stuff up and saying we did it and of course they did aurora and of course they're up to their eyeballs i mean shooters in the same outfit they grease little kids boom right in the head to get our guns isn't it obvious i went to a uh wedding in Fredericksburg at a Catholic church once. And that's it. I think I've been at a Catholic church one time in my life. 
doesn't matter to these people. They're going to say, I'm working for the Vatican. That's fine. There's no evidence for that. It's not true. And it's a diversion and a distraction. I said I want to take a lot of calls today, and I haven't done that. Do you think they're going to try to blow up something big here in America? Are they, they bloodthirsty to try to really kill a whole many of Americans? Pat, they've already tried. They, you know, they haven't succeeded. Ten airplanes to blow up, right. uh, Sears Tower, right. and lately trains they want to blow up, and all these things, it's, they haven't succeeded. <laughs> They want to do a grand finale. This, we, if you see, look at every single terror operation that they attempted to do and they've succeeded in 9-11, is a grand finale to destroy this country. It's why we want to kill you. You ought to read it, folks. Everybody in this audience ought to read this.
terrorism in Islam is not a new phenomenon. It is actually traced by some scholars back to the 11th century and a group known as the al Hashin, who were essentially mercenary Muslim assassins who worked for the Islamic caliphs. But Islam was a late arriver on the scene to the political use of terrorism. Centuries before Islam even existed, during the Roman Pax Romana, the Roman peace, of the first century, terrorism was a common political and financial tactic used by the Roman Empire. The Pax Romana is often romanticized in historical literature by promoters of the restoration of the Roman Reich. But the brutal truth of the matter is that Rome not only often selected its Caesar through a process of elimination in gangland-style murders of political opposition, but also enforced its Pax Romana through the use of terror against its conquered subjects to ensure control and enforcement of taxes. Often Roman military personnel would also do what amounted to freelance work on the side, terrorizing the local inhabitants in exchange for extra payments of money, or in other words, extortion through terrorism. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3 verse 1 and following we read this account, Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judah and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Ita and of the region of Trachonitis and Lysanias the tetrarch of Avilene, and Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests, the word of God came unto John the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. Then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And John said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him asking, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. These admonitions given to soldiers illustrate that the use of violence against civilians along with the threat of false accusations were being used to extort money from the civilian population. Thus why we read of John the Baptist's condemnation of the practices. A.T. Robertson in his word pictures of the Greek New Testament explain the meaning of the Greek term translated in the phrase, exact no more than that which is appointed. The term, exact, is from a Greek word which means to shake thoroughly and so thoroughly as to terrify, in order to extort money or property by intimidating, this practice is also referenced in 3rd Maccabees chapter 7 verse 21. It was a process of blackmail to which Socrates refers to in Xenophon, memorabilia, to 9-1. This was a constant temptation to soldiers. A.T. Robertson correctly notes that during the time of the testament, Terrorism was used as a financial and political weapon by the Roman army, to the extent of even down to individual soldiers who would exploit their military position and use it to conduct a campaign of terror against wealthy local inhabitants to gain extra money. Later in history, it would be this very practice that would be revived by the Sicilian Mafia that became so wealthy and powerful it eventually made its way to control of the Vatican Bank. During this time of Roman rule by terrorism during the first century AD, a reactionary group of Jewish terrorists arose in Palestine, calling on imagery from the Old Testament Book of Judges, to form an order to assassinate Jewish collaborators with Rome's rule of terror over its conquered Jewish subjects in Judea. These terrorists were called dagger men because they carried small daggers in their cloaks and would blend into a crowd and stab their intended political targets to death fleeing in the mayhem of a shocked crowd to escape. After the Catholicization of the Roman Empire under the Theodosius Codex of Pope VI III, state-sponsored religious terrorism became the official legal policy of the Roman Empire. All churches were confiscated not bearing the name Catholic and handed over to Catholic clergy. The ministers of these churches were made enemies of the state. Their property was confiscated, and their converts were convicted and sentenced to exile, prison or execution. The inquisitions were used later to keep European civilians in a constant state of terror with the threat of being tortured to death or burned alive for the slightest infractions of Catholic religious law or dogma. And these practices of government use of institutionalized terrorism did not stop until the Reformation created a breakup of the monopoly of state churches in Europe in favor of the Enlightenment and intellectual freedoms. The development of Islamic terrorism from the 11th century however, bears an unmistakable resemble to the secrecy and degree system of the Masonic Order of the Knights Templars used by the Crusaders, which later became the claimed origin of the Freemasons in Western Europe and the Americas.
It is theorized this development was in reaction to the Crusaders and its apparently efficient use of these esoteric occultic societal organizational structures. But it is at least equally possible, it was not a reaction at all, but rather a form of infiltration by the Roman Catholic Church into Islam itself, as you will soon see. When one examines the actual sacred texts of Islam, it is clear that the scriptures of Islam, gave no more credence to these Islamic assassins, than did the New Testament to the practices of terrorism used by the Roman Catholic Empire. And yet both existed, and in fact, may have borne a direct historical connection, just as you will see today. The origin of modern Islamic terrorism, just like its ancient counterpart, is in fact, not Islamic at all. It is actually Christian, and to be more historically specific, it is Roman Catholic. The imperial state religion of the Holy Roman Empire, established as the law of the state under Pope Sixtus III. At the time, the Vatican Bank uh, was a sort of offshore bank based in Vatican. So you get a bank account and you can transfer money wherever you want without being known. So your identity remains secret. So it's ideal for money laundering. The Vatican Bank is obviously a bank so its purpose is that of making profits. And Roberto Calvi helped the Vatican Bank at doing so. Hold up. The Vatican is waging secret wars internationally? Exactly. Hold up. The Vatican is waging secret wars internationally? Exactly. Hold up. The Vatican is waging secret wars internationally? Exactly. getting the real story. Calvi was being used as a puppet to distribute Vatican funds to terrorist groups, 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 while keeping the transactions off the Vatican books. Finally, they created the ultimate Ponzi scheme. The Vatican Bank set up dummy companies in the Bahamas and Latin America. These companies applied for loans which collected funds from other international banks. The money, so it said, went straight to one place, the Vatican. Just eight months before the outbreak of World War II, a series of terrorist attacks, as skillfully coordinated as any by Al-Qaeda, were felt all over England. Bombs exploded in power stations and substations from Northumberland to Manchester, from Liverpool to London. This was the work of the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, the notorious terrorist group fighting for a united Ireland. And this campaign was part of something that they called the S-Plan. S stood for sabotage. In Britain, there was outrage. In response, the police arrested 66 terrorists and seized 1,500 sticks of gelignite, along with two tons of the highly explosive potassium chlorate. But the bombing went on. But one group of observers looked on not with horror, but with admiration. War with Britain was just months away. A 
Oscar Faust had made his name fundraising in the United States of America on behalf of the Nazis. Before it entered the war, the USA had its own pockets of Nazi support, particularly in Chicago and New York. Faust's English was good, and when he returned home to Germany in December 1938, he was recruited to German military intelligence, the Abwehr, where he was soon presented with a challenging mission. They immediately sent Oscar Faust to Ireland in February 1939. By a roundabout route, he would make contact with the IRA. Eventually, he met the two most senior members of the organization, Chief of Staff Sean Russell and Head of Bomb Making Seamus O'Donovan. On Easter Monday 1916, hundreds of members of the Irish Republican Brotherhood seized key locations in Dublin and proclaimed the Irish Republic independent of Britain. O'Donovan and Russell were officers in the Dublin Brigade of the IRB. The rebels were no match for the British armoured cars, artillery and machine guns. After seven days of fighting, the Republicans were beaten. In 1921, the Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed, creating an independent island in the south, but the six counties of the north would remain under British rule. But for others, the separation of the north and south was unacceptable. Seamus O'Donovan, Sean Russell and the IRA turned back to the bullet and the bomb. As far as the IRA are concerned, they are as opposed to the government in Dublin, which they saw as puppets of the British, as they are to the British, British continuing to control Northern Ireland. And the IRA are a substantial enough force in the 1920s and in the early 1930s in Ireland. They still have you know, upwards of maybe 15,000 men. Uh, they're still attempting to arm and train and, re and bring in new recruits. The IRA regrouped and retrained under the watchful eyes of a new and determined leader. John Russell becomes leader of the IRA in 1938 and in many ways he's the archetypical uh, IRA militarist. He has very little interest in wider politics. He says we've done enough talking, we've had enough division over politics, this has got us nowhere. What people want from the IRA is a campaign to drive the British from Ireland. He comes to leadership in the IRA by promising a campaign. Sean Russell, now Chief of Staff, appointed Seamus O'Donovan as his Director of Chemicals, that is, Chief Bomb Maker. It was they who devised the S-Plan. The idea is that they'll be able to cause so much disruption that they'll put Ireland back on the headlines in Britain, that the British public will be forced to become aware of the partition of Ireland and that therefore they'll put pressure on the British government as a result. But now, as war grew closer, the two became increasingly interested in how Germany could help their cause and relished the contact with German spy Oscar Faust. O'Donovan made three trips to Germany in 1939 to meet German intelligence, the Abwehr. He was always escorted by his new German friend, the Nazi spy Oscar Faust. At the first meeting in February, he discussed the supply of German arms and ammunition. With Oscar Faust, he went back in April 1939 and again in August. At this last meeting at the German Foreign Office was Joseph McGarrity, an American IRA fundraiser. Seen here with Sean Russell in New York City, McGarrity is thought to have provided the cash to fund the S Plan. McGarrity's job was to show the Nazis that there would be cash to back up the IRA's actions. He was treated like a true friend and collaborator, staying in the best hotels and sampling the finest food and wine. He was then taken to a secret base. Russell is given access to the Brandenburg camp where German forces are trained in sabotage, special explosives training. And he 
he's also then introduced to various people in the Nazi hierarchy, including von Ribbentrop, the, the foreign minister. Von Ribbentrop assigned Foreign Office Minister Edmund Weisenmayer to oversee all joint IRA operations. In early 1940, Sean Russell sailed for America again to drum up support and raise more funds. He temporarily handed over the reins of the IRA to an altogether different personality, Stephen Hayes. A militant and a risk taker, his behavior was compounded by his fondness for alcohol. Stephen Hayes' first act was to intensify the Bloody S campaign. On the 6th of February 1940, explosions occurred simultaneously in London, Birmingham and Manchester. The plan was a very ambitious plan to cause a huge level of disruption in Britain with bombs in public places, in places like cinemas and in smaller targets like letterboxes, for example, and public lavatories, but also then bombs on railway lines and at power stations to effectively try and, and seriously disrupt life in Britain. Hayes's Night of Terror raised eyebrows in Berlin. The Nazis were becoming concerned about the S-Plan's lack of focus. They wanted the IRA to concentrate on military targets in Northern Ireland, but Hayes and O'Donovan seemed more interested in plain terror. 300 bombs had been detonated, 96 people had been injured, seven had died, and hundreds of IRA members interned. The starting point was, of course, Auschwitz, because I'm a German, and so I had to study, well, how could this happen? Kunzel found himself asking the same question after 9-11, and he knew immediately that part of the answer was Nazi ideology. The Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al-Husseini, the highest Muslim authority in Palestine and an ardent admirer of the Nazis. As a close friend of SS Chief Heinrich Himmler, the Mufti spent World War II in Nazi Germany. He helped oversee a German shortwave broadcast to the Middle East called Radio Zeesen, which tried to win over Arabs and Muslims to the Nazi cause. Every evening there was this kind of anti-Semitic propaganda uh, in order to influence the mindset of the Arabs. And it was sent not only in Arabic language, but also in Persian language, also in Turkish language. A faithful listener to the anti-Semitic programs in Persian on Radio Zeesen was a young Ayatollah Khomeini. Council also documents how the Nazis gave money to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Nazi Germany put all its weight behind the Muslim Brotherhood. And the Muslim Brotherhood distributed Arabic translations of Mein Kampf. The Muslim Brotherhood is the parent of terrorist groups like the PLO, Hezbollah, Hamas, and Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda.
some surprise um, in the United States and also in Britain that you have a job in um, looking and investigating into terrorism. And when your own um, past quotes uh, about terrorism, uh, and you're obviously anticipating what I'm going to ask you, uh, seems to be an apologist for terrorism. Um, you see, um, you were quoted as saying the following in 1982, and I quote you, if it is an actual sure. quote, we must pledge ourselves to support those brave men and women who at this very moment are carrying forth the struggle against British imperialism in the streets of Belfast and Derry. And you added, um, well, three years later, you said, if civilians are killed in an attack on a military installation, it's exactly regrettable but I will not morally blame the IRA for it. that they won't see the error of their ways? No, sir, they will not. now. The only chance we have as a country right now is for Osama bin Laden to, de to deploy and, de and detonate a major weapon in the United States. Now, the only chance we have as a country right now is for Osama bin Laden to, de to deploy and, de and detonate a major weapon in the United States. To deploy and, de and detonate a major weapon in the United States. To deploy and, de and detonate a major weapon in the United States. Only Osama can, can execute an attack which will force Americans to demand that their government protect them effectively, consistently, and with as much violence as necessary. seriously suggesting that the US should be indifferent to whether Israel survives? I think, I think that's exactly what I'm suggesting. How could that possibly be when Israel is the closest ally and when it's the only democratic state in the region? Well, I think democracy is, a, is, a, is sort of a silly foreign policy goal, sir. We... I did, part of the reason we went into Iraq uh, was, uh, the main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't, but he had the capacity to make weapons of mass destruction. But I also talked about the human suffering in Iraq. And I also talked the need to advance a freedom agenda. The terrorists attacked us and killed 3,000 of our citizens before we started the freedom agenda in the Middle East. They were... 
What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing, except for it's part of, and nobody's ever suggested in this administration that Saddam Hussein ordered the attack. But uh, Mohammed Atta, the lead attacker, met uh, in Prague with a senior Iraqi intelligence official five months before the attack. But Iraq was a, uh, Iraq, the, the, the... You have said in the past that it was, quote, pretty well confirmed. No, I never said that. Okay. I, I think said. that is... No, it's absolutely not. Uh, it's been pretty well confirmed that he did go to Prague and he did meet with uh, a senior official of the Iraqi intelligence. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. September 11th, 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 2001. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam. 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 War and danger. Continuing danger. Hour of danger. Very, very dangerous world. A grave new threat. Horrific acts of atrocities. Murderous regimes dedicating to killing us. Tyranny and terror. Slaughtered thousands. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons program. The deadliest. Of weapons, terrible weapons, nuclear weapons, nuclear weapons, poison gas, torture chambers, mass graves, deadly technologies, radical ideology of hate, terror of threats, terror, 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 war on terrorism, war against terrorism, global war on terror, global terrorism, 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 terrorism. Terrorism, 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 terrorism,